This video is going to talk about some rules that you can use with summation notation and some specific sums that we're going to see coming up. So first let's talk about uh, a couple of algebra rules here. Uh, we have i equals 1 to n and if you have some constant that's in front of some kind of expression, this could be x squared or cosine, could be anything, that k value can be brought on the outside of the summation. So we can move that on the outside and then we can just work with the sum with that formula. The second rule that we have is you're allowed to break up summations. So if I've got two different expressions inside here, maybe x squared plus x or something like that, then what you can do is you can break it up into two separate summation notations and we'll have the same sign that you have here is the same sign that's going to show up here. So you either have a plus here and a plus there or both of them are going to end up being minus. Uh, that's how you're allowed to break up the summation and make things easier because you're working with each one individually. So now that we've looked at this, let's take a look at some other summation rules. Okay, so here's some more summation formulas. These are formulas for specific sums. So if n is a very large number, like if n is going from like 1 to 100, for instance, you don't want to have to add this 100 times all the way through. So these formulas make it easier to tell what the sum actually is. So if you have a constant that's here, and you're going from 1 to n, all you're going to do is take the constant and multiply it by n. That's going to give you the total sum. Because if you think about it, if we're going to go from, like for instance, 1 to 3, and there's a number here, you're adding that number three times. So that's why it ends up being multiplication. And then the rest of these, these formulas, they're proven by what's referred to as mathematical induction. Induction is something to look at more for those of you that are going on to discrete mathematics. You'll get into proving these type of formulas in that class. At the end of the book, there's an uh, appendice and it shows kind of where these uh, come from here in case you're interested, but these are formed by mathematical induction. So all these are listed for you. So if you have summation i equals one to n of just i only, Here's the two formulas. And I wrote two forms out for you because we get in some problems where we're trying to find the exact area by working through this. It's actually going to be easier to break this up into here and then we can take it down into individual sums um, by separating all these. So that's why I have these expanded for you for each thing, but both versions are provided for you. This is i cubed uh, down here. So now you have i really the zero power, first, second, and third power. So these are important formulas that you want to make sure you understand. And so the future videos in this section are going to be talking about how we can use all these rules, splitting up limits, using these rules here if you have large numbers for n to allow you to get the exact sum.